Hello again, Cons here. The Patreon poll is currently really tied, which gives me a lot of freedom in what weapons I decide to use. I've already done Hunting Horn, and so now I'm moving on to Dual Blades. Uh, yeah, so now I'm going to cover a, a Dual Blade run that I got. It's not too difficult to do with Dual Blades, to be honest with you. It's quite a fun matchup, and it's quite uh, easy to maintain, especially because of how quickly you reach the elemental thresholds. But uh, yeah, I'll talk about the set at the end. Right now, you just see me buffing and procking Protective Polish, because uh, you really do eat through sharpness on this guy. Um, rock steady for the standard opener that I always do, the double uh, flinch swipe into claw, uh, or whatever the words are. I mean, you, you've probably seen this a dozen times by now. Um, the thing about dual blades is it's kind of unlike some of the other elements, whereas in previous elements, often I was running just enough element to get the uh, elemental topple and then otherwise focusing raw. Because it's dual blades, and I'm sure you probably know how dual blades work by now, but uh, yeah, so much of the damage comes from elemental that you kind of got to force it anyway. Um, yeah, again, this will make more sense when I show you the set, but uh, at the moment, it's just very standard opening stuff. Um, unfortunately, a little bit of a shaky start here, because I, I uh, well, I got a bit greedy for the opener, to be honest. Uh, just to clarify, this isn't a run that I grinded like uh, a thousand hours for to get some crazy speed run or anything, so there are going to be a lot of mistakes, and it's kind of more of a reasonable, possible run for just anyone watching. Um, not to say that I'm not doing speed run stuff, like you can see how aggressively I'm playing with my health. Uh, obviously, if you were just doing this in multiplayer, nice whiff. Um, you would be healing and, and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, that, that isn't to say that I'm completely avoiding the idea of a speedrun. It's just that this isn't like some sort of unattainable um, super reset for crazy AI kind of run. Now, for the head, I, I keep missing the first of the two hits at the start. But, uh, yeah, for the head, I like to actually go on the outside of it. Unfortunately, it's a little bit submerged here. But uh, if I go on the inside, I found more often than not that my demon, uh, as I'm demon dancing, his head pushes me out of range. Uh, your mileage may vary on that. Um, now, again, for stamina management, it's all very standard stuff. I like to personally spam the spin moves. So you'll see, I like to get out of uh, demon, I like to sort of spin, leave demon mode, and then I'll sort of enter demon mode, um, spin, leave demon mode, spin. It's kind of a standard way that I preserve uh, stamina. Um, the, the sort of the demon flurry rush that you can do while you're in arc demon mode is really nice for some of the smaller openings he has, although I wouldn't really rely on it. Also, the six flurry slash is quite good too. Uh, the thing about Alatrion is because he punishes you so hard, things like I'm doing here, because uh, I had a feeling Clagger was coming up, I went for it. But um, but that is really not a great idea because that Fire Breath has a very small opening usually. And uh, and all it takes is one pin and then one lightning move, especially if you don't have Rock Steady, for you to get taken out. Uh, so you definitely have to play this fight more cautiously than a lot of other ones just because of how much damage and how much he can punish you. But uh, yeah, the Elemental Topple is a really nice source for DPS in this fight. You'll get uh, three, two or three fairly easily. You can see I've gotten two quite near the start of the of the hunt. Obviously, when it goes into Dragon Mode, that number's going to go down. It's going to be harder, but uh, yeah, unfortunately, Blue Sharpness too here. Now, while he's coming down from uh, that sort of three head move, you can line up a Demon Dance after you've dodged the final Lightning Bolt. However, I found that more often than not, I missed the most important hit, so I prefer to go for a six Flurry Rush uh, along uh, for some of these moves, like here, for example. Even the 6 Flurry Rush is quite a high commitment move. Um, I'm sure if you've used it by now, you, you're well aware of this, but it, it definitely takes a long time. Not as much as the Demon Dance, but you are locked into that combo once you've used the third hit. Oh, Smoke Bombs, if you haven't seen my Advanced Alatrion Tip uh, video, unfortunately I messed it up here. But uh, yeah, Smoke Bombs are a nice way to dunk Alatrion if he's in Rage Mode and you can't Flash Bomb or Flint Shot or anything like that. I've seen people throw a slinger at him when he goes purple like this, when the map goes purple. I, I don't actually know what that does. I, I, I tried messing with it and I had mixed results, so I'm not 100% sure. But uh, yeah, just buff up while he's landing. Don't forget to let him do at least one move once he's gone into the air, because apparently if you don't, he'll just go straight back into it. But uh, yeah, buff up, sharpen up, or maybe reproc your dash juice. Um, like, hair freak, that's quite a dangerous opening. You don't land the last hits. You either can start a little bit early, but then you miss the first two hits. Um, but for me, starting earlier is better because you're just sort of uh, on the safer side of things. Uh, that, by the way, the entrance into demon mode, he has two demon mode attacks there. Oh, sorry, two dragon mode attacks. Um, he has the one that he uses when he's already in dragon mode and the one that he uses when he's transitioning into it. Ignoring the one in the sky, that is. Um, now, the one that he transitions from ice or fire into dragon mode has a very sort of short range, especially near the head. And so you saw how close I stood without having to iframe. But when he uses that Dragon Pulse while already being in Dragon Mode, you can't play it so risky. Uh, it has a much w uh, wider range on it, so you need to iframe. Fortunately, we are running Safi, uh, which means that... And you can see every time I get the Clagger, ideally, if I was close enough, I could use my spin move into the uh, uppercut, into the, uh, the sort of auto clutch move. Unfortunately, I've been far away from him every time he's done it, or I haven't had enough time. I've been in the middle of a high commitment move. So that's the reason you see me actually clutch clawing on rather than uh, using that move. 
Unfortunately, he's about to fly again. Again, if I had more smoke bombs, I could use them. Alternatively, you can wait for him to leave rage mode, at which point he's uh, susceptible to flash grenades and... Uh, flash grenades? Flash pods and uh, uh, flint shots while he's in the air. Uh, otherwise, the nice, another nice thing you can do is just sort of poke at his legs. A dual blade does a lot of elemental damage. You can see I'm just sort of going for whatever hits I can, uh, basically praying for the elemental topple. It's quite unlikely, seeing as I've already got two already and he's in dragon mode, but uh, because of how much dragon damage, uh, how much elemental damage we did already, you see we got it. And so that's another way to uh, take him down while he's in rage mode and you can't use uh, flashes or flint shots. You have a few options for you uh, available. Don't completely sheathe if you're going for a decent time. That said, it might not be worth it if you're in multiplayer and you're risking yourself getting hit. At that point, it might be best just to uh, buff up and and not take any risks. Yeah, hey, you can see, um, it was quite a short opening. I wouldn't have had enough time to go for a six flurry slash or a demon mod, but I, I ended up leaving demon mod, I think because of stamina, but also because I wanted to, and uh, and then just using the uh, arc demon mode flurry swipes. You can see I kind of like to use them a lot when, uh, well, unfortunately we're in uh, blue again. So hair, for example, this is the one I was talking about. That's one that you need to iframe. It has a much uh, shorter, a much longer range on it. You'll see he puts his feet on the ground, and then after a little bit of a delay, he does the pulse. Takes a bit of getting used to. There's a small uh, sort of movement he does with his front legs that you can look for, although it's not uh, exactly easy to go for. And do be careful when dodging these, uh, this line of uh, lightning. It can be tempting to get really greedy and kind of uh, take a risk that you shouldn't, but they have a deceptively large hitbox, or a hurt zone, I should say. So definitely be careful, um, err on the side of caution, because that's one of his most damaging moves, especially if he have got very good uh, thunder resistance. Uh, by the way, when he's doing this Ice Breath attack, you can claw onto him, uh, fairly consistent, you don't take any damage, it can be a nice way to tenderize if your weapon needs it. Uh, however, you've probably noticed I haven't really been tenderizing this hunt, and that is because I am running a 100% affinity build that doesn't require the claw. I don't think that's optimal, I'm sure it's probably more DPS to run tenderize and, and uh, offensive skills. Uh, however, I can't stand the claw. Um, it's not as bad with dual blades, to be honest with you, because of the spin move, but uh, because of the infrequency of the claggers and also how often it is that you're out of range, um, oh, by the way, demon dance on the legs there is a nice uh, opening. So hair, for example, you can see that uh, I just about missed that. Uh, and that's even though I had like a really good opening there and I wasn't really in a high committal move. Um, so yeah, it's, it can be quite difficult to land that auto automatic 10D on him depending on your positioning, which is the reason I kind of just insist on running 100% affinity. Uh, the Safi Jiva, I've got four pieces, which gives me 40, uh, as well as Agitator and uh, Critical Eye and stuff like that. Again, we'll talk about this at the end of the video. Um, I can never work out where his head's going at the end of uh, <laughs> at the end of the Nova, to be honest with you. That's one way I could definitely improve my times. Also, you'll probably notice that I haven't been using very good, uh, making very good use of my mantles this hunt. Uh, this is the first time I equipped Evasion, and I only used Rock Steady at the start, just to uh, just to get the opener off. And it's been eight minutes already, so I could have easily used Evasion Mantle and had Rock Steady basically come back um, for use later. So it's uh, yeah, definitely make better use of your mantles than I do. Uh, especially Evasion Mantle, because the uh, the damage that you get from it makes a really big difference. Um, and it's quite easy to proc Evasion Mantle on this guy. Um, I do like using it right after the Nova, just because uh, you get, you're get you going to get those Elemental Topples and it's going to give you bigger openings, but it can be easy to lose the Evasion Mantle damage boost during this time, so I don't know. Uh, it's, a, it's a mixed bag, but I would say use your Mantles as frequently as possible. Um, I would recommend Rocksteady and Evasion, but that's kind of just because of my playstyle. Uh, impact is also probably pretty solid for this, just because it's dual blades, um, and you're going to be getting, oh, you're going to be getting uh, head openings uh, quite a lot. Uh, a lot of the damage you go for is going to be for the head, um, so it can be a good idea to take impact mantle too. Although you'll probably only get one or two KOs from it. But uh, yeah, as far as the actual openings themselves, it's dual blades, so you have a lot of freedom in what you go for. Um, it can be risky to commit to demon dances, as I've said, but hopefully the sort of uh, openings that you've seen me take. Uh, will we'll, uh, elucidate that because it's kind of hard for me to give a play by play because with dual blades at least uh, the way I play dual blades is it very much varies on where I'm standing where I want to go where I want to be what, what sort of uh, how quickly I get to the opening stuff like that um, so I, I kind of just play it as I see it uh, I, I knew that he was going to come with the swipe there and I went for a demon dance anyway because I was nearly convinced he was dead but that's not the kind of opening that I would recommend a demon dance on under normal circumstances but uh, yeah, there you go, a uh, fairly quick dual blade hunt, uh, got it basically after the first Nova a little bit. Uh, it could have been better, but it could have been worse too. You can see my set on screen now with the augments, I'm going to show every piece of armor, and then I'm going to talk about the set in detail in a second. So yeah, please don't complain that I didn't show my full armor set and all that stuff, it's on here now. It's not particularly um, <laughs> novel, it's five Safi with dual blades, it's, it's uh, pretty typical. But uh, yeah, let's uh, get the setup. 
So you can see the set on screen now. Uh, ice attack nice and maxed out because uh, again, unlike other weapons, I do want to get as much elemental damage as possible because this is dual blades. Uh, so it's not like greatsword, for example, where I wanted the bare minimum. But uh, yeah, very, very standard skills. I've got uh, five edgy, which gives me 10. And by the way, it's always going to be enraged, obviously, because I'm using claw swipes and flint shots and I want that 20% rage modifier. So yeah, 10 affinity from edgy, uh, five affinity from the four points of attack boost, the 30 from weakness exploit and the 40 from running full safi is basically taking me up to 100% affinity with the Kiao weapons and the uh, little affinity custom upgrade. Yeah, very, very typical. Just trying to get to 100 affinity or as close as possible without having to tenderize because I hate tendy on, uh, on a lot of weapons, even though dual blades is not that bad. I've talked about this earlier. Uh, aside from that, we've got coalescence. Very typical uh, for dual blades. It's quite nice to have because it's so easy to sheath your weapon. Um, and the boost that you get is pretty substantial, especially given how few raw skills I have on the set. Um, and otherwise, yeah, item prolonger protective polish because it's dual blades and then crit element and crit boost from the Kiao weapon and just uh, decorations respectively. Uh, very sort of typical set. I don't have full health boost all the time uh, when I don't have Ruck Steady, for example. So it, it can be worth uh, swapping out some more points for health boost, some DPS if you want to. Personally, I found that dual blades are nimble enough to not need them. But of course, your mileage may vary. You saw how many uh, elemental topples we got. It was very easy to get the elemental topples. So worst, worst, worst case scenario, just swap out a point of attack boost or a point of uh, ice attack for, for some health boost and for some uh, other defensive skills if you need them. Uh, if you get sick of uh, tender, uh, if, uh, if you get sick of null berries, then swap out coalescence and uh, put in another point of blight res and you won't have to worry about them at all. But yeah, uh, not really a huge amount to say here. Huh? Very typical stuff. Uh, do let me know if you have any other questions, but otherwise I hope this all made sense and uh, I hope you have good luck with your dual blade hunts against Alatrion. Uh, take it easy. Bye-bye.